Yo, 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 what it do, what it do? Hey, we know you should have saw that fresh new intro. Wasn't that shit sick? Well, we couldn't agree more, guys. Right, we just collaborated with our boy Omar at Sun City Vibes to help create an intro that would take our podcast to the next level. Do you need help with your video editing and content creation to help elevate your business to the next level? Well, Sun City Vibes has you covered without a doubt. Yeah, that's right, guys. Whether it's a logo reveal, a music video, drone footage, or even t-shirt printing, guys, hit up Sun City Vibes for quality work and affordable price. Shit, Omar even made us a sick-ass hat. Look at this. It's a fresh-ass fresh. hat. Fresh. Shit's fresh. Fresh. So, yeah, guys, go help support those that support us and hit up our boy Omar and tell him Chris and Misa sent you from the podcast and help support a local El Paso business today. Let's go. Yeah. Three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. As always, guys, co-host of the podcast, Mr. Misa fucking L is yes, here with sir. us. Yo, yo, yo. What it do, what it do, what it do. In the producer chair, my sister Amanda is back. Say what's up to the podcast. Hey, what's up, everyone? Amanda. How's everyone doing today? Good. Up, Good. How are you, Glad Amanda? to be back. How yeah. are you, Amanda? I yeah. guess I didn't bomb last time. I was asked to come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's also because Joe has a kid and responsibilities, so he can't be here today. But anyway, so, Thanks. guys, episode 135, we have a very, very special guest. We have the EPISD uh, assistant superintendent, Mr. Mark Paz in the building. So what's up to the podcast, What's Mark? up, podcast hey. listeners? Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Paz. So, um, Mark, we actually fucking, we have a history here. Yeah, way uh, back. Mark How is, old are you? Dude, I'm, now I just turned 31 on Thursday. About so 30 years. Yeah, this guy's wow. known me my whole life. He's known my sister, like, her whole life. Um, family member, actually, uh, knows my dad. Uh, Mikey Nojos, David Renteria, shout out to all those guys. Uh, but thanks for being here, man. It's really cool to have you in as a guest on the podcast. Uh, I know you're a like busy guy, but uh, thanks for, for being here today. Give him a round of applause, Misa. <laughs> All right, Mark. So for the people who may not know who you are, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Mark Paz. I'm uh, currently the assistant superintendent of secondary schools in EPISD. I've uh, been a lifelong uh, teacher, educator, coach, um, kind of been in all various grade levels from sixth grade all the way up to uh, high school. I've been a middle school principal in Canotillo. At the old Canotillo High School, I was the CMS principal for about three and a half years. Then I transitioned to be the principal at El Paso High School for the last four and a half before just you know, jumping into this new role, which is not only new for myself, but new for the district because I oversee every middle school and high school. So that it is, is a crazy. unique new opportunity. Yeah, and that's crazy. In EPISD, we're talking how many schools? Uh, I oversee 24. Okay, damn, that's a lot of schools too. So, uh, real fast, Mr. Mark, before we get into this, we have a, a tradition on the podcast. It's called the Kraken of the Celebratory mm. Beer, and it sounds like this. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Cheers. everybody Cheers. who's listening. Salud. Thank you guys for following us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, so, Mark, so interesting thing you were saying. We're going to talk about your education background. We're going to get into all those things that you're doing now. Uh, we'll also talk some trending topics a little bit later, but... Um, so kind of tell us like how you kind of know, like, I guess, like my dad and, and some of the people we know. And, and then you were saying that you've pretty much known me your whole life. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. The roots are deep in, you know, the, the town and country folk, you know, that they, they know everyone. So uh, I think it goes back to my wife when Christina and I started uh, hanging out. Uh, she was working at Stateline and her best friend was Claudia Medina. And so Claudia Noy had your history with your parents, you know, grew right. up together and in the neighborhood. And so instantly, because El Paso is a small, big city, we all just kind of started hanging out and, and you know, that, that connection is deep. And so that it was just easy to establish friendships and roots. And so that threw us into another circle of friends, um, that we hadn't had prior. And, and we, I mean, we basically hung out every week, every weekend, every UTEP tailgate game, every, <laughs> everything you could think of. We were just always, we was always there. So I was a little bit older, right? I was already in my, I guess, 20s by that time. But you guys are babies. And yeah, you're dude. running around and climbing up the Stealing hills at UTEP. Lights, and 
and being hooligans, hoodlums, it was fun. It was fun. And we let you. We're like, yeah, go do your thing. Yeah, dude, they didn't give a fuck. No. You guys weren't stopping us. No, like, nobody stopped anybody. They just anybody. watched you from afar. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're like, he's alive. He didn't <laughs> yeah. fall off I was that telling uh, Misa before you got here, Mark, I was like, he was probably there when I had my very first fucking beer, like at oh, a yeah, tailgate. He was, like, he was, he was the watching one, me. The ones that we didn't know about. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, more so than the ones we did. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, Misa knows uh, I was running around with Greg Wilson all the time. Mm -hmm. and me oh, and Greg yeah. were like inseparable. Like, that was like my first best friend and yeah you like dude you tap tailgates that shit was like legendary it was and still is it still is and it's cool because like uh it's literally like something that my family's done for years and years and years and years and like everybody's like even adam goes to tailgates like you know what i mean it's like it passes through generations so it's yeah. it's badass you guys don't even go for the game huh no so dude, i no, did i, I, well, I, I Mark love would, football yes. <laughs> I, I, orange and blue to the core so i i was at games and uh i would be back at halftime <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, Chris wouldn't even make it to the yeah, end. It depends, dude. Some days, yeah, some days. I the mean, big good games, they'd yeah. be there, and then they'd be like, "We're tired, we're hungry." Yeah, dude. It it all depends, and it was cool because like we had a we had Quinn and Demps in here. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, well, not in here. It was through a uh, Zoom because he was in Chicago, but. Uh, one of the years, I think it was like the 2000 WAC championship game. Mm -hmm. Like we were showing them the highlights on YouTube and yeah. Misa's like, I've never seen the Sun Bowl dude, that full before. It was dude. awesome. Awesome. And there's games where they were just packed. Dude. And then there's games where it was an amazing game that had a lot at stake and there's no one there. Right. But if you stayed around, you're like, I, I was there. And then it's funny because when you talk talking the story. Of course, everybody in the city was at that game. You're like, yeah, there was like 12,000 people there. There's no right. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the crazy. whole West Side. Yeah. So you grew up like in El Paso. Are you from actually, El Paso? No, Where I'm are actually you from? from Tucson. Uh, okay, you're from I, Arizona. Yeah, my dad was an educator and he was a deputy superintendent of Tucson Unified. So I grew up in Tucson until I was about 12. I left when I was in starting seventh grade, moved to Dallas, uh, went to school in Dallas for about three years, then moved to El Paso. Um, so we're, we're transplants. But the funny thing was, is my parents, uh, my dad came to be the superintendent for EPISD here in, in El Paso. And so he was superintendent, I guess, for like nine to 10 years, really long time. And um, when I graduated high school from Coronado, I left after a year at UTEP, went to Austin, tried to make it in the big city uh, in East Texas, working at the Marriott, going to school part time, doing my thing there. But I, I missed El Paso. I mean, I was like, I missed the families. I missed the connections. I missed having people like at the grocery store where you know everybody right. where you're you know when you're at work everybody comes through and they know you they see you it's just different when you're in a city where you know it's not as connected everybody's kind of a transplant and so the first opportunity to come home i did and then i came back to utep finished uh, my undergrad and started teaching right away but uh, my parents were no longer here they were already back in tucson because my dad ended up getting a superintendent job there in tucson that's his home that's my mom's hometown so they moved back and i stayed i was like i'm staying in texas I like Texas and I loved El Paso. So it was easy, right. easy for me. Then my wife's from El Paso. Her family's here. And so it just made it a, a nice, uh, easy way to stay home. Did you ever miss Chris where you were going? Uh, yeah, I was like, where is he? <laughs> Dude, Sixth Street is calling you. I know you're only 14, but right. you get couldn't get into any of these places, but still. Yeah, dude, you, what's crazy is so like you, you said your dad was a like an educator like mm -hmm. like you as well. What was a, what was your mom's career? What, what, so what my mom, doing? she's the brains of the family, truth be told. I mean, she's an athlete. She's a really smart, smart woman. Um, she worked after high school. Of course, is you know, the 50s so they were like go to work be a secretary you know that's your job right. she actually worked for bottles and james uh, she worked for bottles and james distributor and so we always had tons of alcohol <laughs> oh shit yeah, that's that's crazy. Crazy. i remember that Jesus. about growing up I was like hey we got this wine all the time we had a bar <laughs> our di most people have dining rooms right, we had right. a bar our, it was like a sweet setup and it, people were always at the house and my mom always had free stuff for everybody so that was cool but then after i was born she became a stay-at-home mom and that was Still to this day, what she does now, she takes care of the grandbabies, my sister's kids. Okay, nice. That's crazy. Do you feel like, uh, because obviously, you know, you're an educator now, um, you know, you I were actually named principal of the year back in, what was it, 2020, I believe? Yeah, during COVID. Um, 2020? Yeah, and so, like, <laughs> do you feel like uh, you kind of, like, followed, like, your father's footsteps? Or, like, is it kind of a thing you're just, like, in, like we're born to, like, kind of be, like, an educator? Yeah, I tried really hard not to. In fact, I wouldn't, like, direct myself <laughs> towards like, public relations. Right? I tried to do anything yeah, else. I was like, yeah, I saw my dad's life, you know, at first he was never home. He was always working as superintendent. He was just always working. Always busy. And, uh it was stressful. You, you, you know, when you have to manage a board of governors and, and all these schools, it was a stressful career. And so I, I, my perspective of education was very different. Um, and so I tried not to go down that path, but the li life is funny. And, um, I was coaching youth basketball and, uh, 
assistant coach, my, or I guess I was his assistant coach, but, um, it was, uh, Dr. Armando Aguirre, who's a principal at the time at Armandad Ezra Cordova middle school. And his sons played on our team. And so I coached with him for like two and a half years while I was in college. And then as soon as I graduated, he offered me a teaching position. And I was like, no, no, thank you, man. I, <laughs> I appreciate the offer. And, and, uh, but there's no way I'm getting into that path. I'm, I want to go towards this PR side. And I was working with Heather's Vandenberg's right. dad at the time as an intern, like, like TVO. North yeah. America. I was working with TVO right. with all okay. the rest of the UTEP football team. So yeah, it was, really, it was fun. It was a fun job. And I was like, I, this is cool. I'm good. I'm set. Um, but then I took a road trip with, uh, my parents, best friends, Teddy and Chewy Martinez, who were like also family. And, uh, just in that four hour drive, they convinced me you should be an educator. Think about it. Holidays, summer off. It's like the greatest life. You know, why wouldn't Got you want to do that? And I was like, yeah, you're right. That's the best. <laughs> you know, I worked at Marriott for freaking 50 hour day weeks and 50 yeah. hour weeks. And it was brutal. And I was like, I don't want to go back to that. Right. And working Some weekends, working and weekend. And yeah. And so I was like, no, yep. no, that sounds great. So I actually came back that next week to practice. And I told the principal or Armando, I was like, Hey, did you still have that? <laughs> well, if I can coach basketball, then, then I'll do it. And he goes, yeah, you can coach. So it was done. Let's sign me up. What Just do I need? Like that, dude. That's yeah. crazy. And I wasn't an education major. So I had to go back to school and, okay. and to get certified to, to teach. So it was uh, a quick process, but it was worth it. Honestly. And then it, from there, it all just kind of, yeah, it was very natural. Good to know. Yeah. It was natural being in the classroom in front of kids. It was just a very it's where I was supposed to be. Okay, Got an so, award in the Tom so Brady of principles. You, you tried to teach, right? Mm -hmm. And you just didn't like that shit, huh? No, I did substitute <laughs> so, teaching for well, different. two years. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I was also living in South Florida. Oh, very, very different, different yeah. than El Paso. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, nope, I'm, I'm good. When there's a kid who just got out of like jail and eighth grade yeah, stuff, and I'm like, so. this isn't for me. She was like teaching yeah, the yeah. island boys in there. <laughs> the island boys. Yeah, but I mean, you still have like, I'm sure Mark has dealt with kids that were like, that are young and already getting in trouble. Like, that's not like a South Florida thing. That's like everywhere, no, really. Yeah. yeah, but I would say, and you hear this from people that are not from El Paso that come and teach here. It is a different world. So they so like the, it's more like tame here. Kind yeah, of oh, yeah. Our okay. our community, our parents, they value education and they still respect the teacher right. and the role that they play right. in their child's lives a lot. Right. And so we have, of course, discipline because not every parent can send us their very best the same way. But they they do work really hard with the schools to make it a partnership. And um, there's more good in than not. And compared to what. Friends will say in even Arlington, Dallas, they're like, man, El Paso is a gem. Right. I mean, those kids are amazing. I mean, you, the discipline we deal with is tenfold compared to what we would have seen in El Paso. So it, it is unique. Yeah. And that's crazy. Cause like, I would never like, you know, I wouldn't really consider that at first, but then, you know, you have somebody that, that goes and tries to teach and is just like, you know what, it's just not for me. And like, yeah. the good thing is, is that she was able to like realize that right away yeah. and not like, you know, you weren't miserable like there, like stuck there and you were able to move on. But like, um, what's, what's one of the hardest things that you think Mark is like, uh, the hardest part of being like a good, like educator, a good teacher. You don't have a life. Like <laughs> you're just yeah, devoted, yeah, yeah. You're just devoted to your right. career. You're devoted to other people's children. I mean, right. think about that. Like I spend more time with other kids than my own right. as an educator. And then you have to accept that. You have to accept that. You're going to be working weekends planning. You're going to spend your own money on materials because you want it to be a good lesson. Like every single minute of the day is geared towards other people's kids or people's, you know, these strangers that walk into your room every day. And, and to love that, to really embrace that. I mean, that's what makes the career very fulfilling because there's the reward at the end of it all when you see kids thrive and succeed. But that, that's the hardest part. You know, you have to be committed to that way wholeheartedly. And if right. you're not, that's when it's like, mm, I don't know. Or if there's so many uh, like kind of distractions and challenges that are beyond your control and it's too much and it outweighs the good, then that's when you kind of lose teachers, right? You have to make sure that the environment can control uh, the teacher can have control, total control of that environment so they can maximize whatever they want to do with those kids and make right. it really fulfilling and, and engaging. And so, I mean, as a teacher, I loved every minute of, as an educator, I loved every minute of my teaching career. The nine years in the classroom were very fulfilling. But I remember like bringing so much of my own materials, spending so yeah. much money for my classroom and, and saying it's cool because it's worth it. Do you remember your very first day like, do. in the classroom? I like, do. What was that I like? actually remember my first like two weeks. OK. Um, and, the, and the reason is because I started teaching on 9-11. Oh, shout oh, So, God, yeah. So yes. my first day of teaching, of course, is I, trying to explain. That I didn't shit, student like. teach. I didn't go to school <laughs> for education. I was, you know, I was a communication major and was going marketing PR route. 
and then decided, oh, I can be a speech teacher because, you know, I have to do speeches in my career. Um, so, you know, I knew having, you know, been not too far off from the age of a kid, I think I was like 22 or 23, um, that I could connect with them and have a lot of fun with them. But I didn't realize how intense the planning was going to be and the different personalities. And I taught in a, in a central school that had, you know, had some serious challenges. Those students, you know, come from very different community than, than we here on the West side. They're usually growing up with a grandparent, or, you know, three or four families in a home and, you know, are, you know, live paycheck to paycheck. So they have those struggles. And so how do you support them and give them big dreams and hopes when they're living day to day? Right. You know, and so I, it was, it was a shift for me to like, okay, I got to change how I approach things. I can't just talk about an obscure topic and think that they know. It. I literally had to show it to them. I had to bring in like music so they could connect to it. I had to really like full circle teach everything. Cause they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. And so to build those connections, especially as a speech teacher, that early couple of years when I was doing that, you know, exclusively, you're trying to tell them how to give topics on, you know, various things about the world. And you're like, oh, I've never left El Paso. They literally had never left like past the West side right. or they've never <laughs> gone past that. Like, like, or that <laughs> side, they stay yeah, on yeah, that side, side of the field. Yeah, right? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even like Reed does like, you ever been to Reed Dustin? Like, no, you've been to Las Cruces? No. Uh, and so no. you're like, man, I got to show you every little detail. So that, right. that was a, a challenge. I, I had to figure that out quickly. And, and I did. And, and you adapt those lessons. But then I think my second week of the, jo- on the job, you know, we're doing like, remember channel one, you'd watch oh, those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. channel yeah, yeah. one. Man. Man. Awesome. We're like, okay, turn on channel one. Why take attendance? And all of a sudden we are like, uh, what's going on that TV there? Like, is this real? What? Like the kids were just quiet. And I was like, because you know, that I was quiet during channel one. Like no one's really, really watching. Yeah, nobody it. was really yeah, watching. Yeah. That yeah. Shit. They're like <laughs> kind of there and you're talking. And so all of a sudden you're like, it's really quiet. What's going on? I look up and I'm like, this what is this? And then you're all of a sudden, you know, you see that first plane in the smoke and the kids are like, they take that gasp and you still don't think it's real. You're like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> you know, I guess some pretty good CGI, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. what's going on? And then all of a sudden, damn, there's another one. And boom. And then all of a sudden the TV went blank for a while. I think it like paused and it was gone because they were like, what if we can't have this live yeah. right now. Um, and then of course, a few seconds later, the principal goes on and says, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, please, Get under your desk. Take a moment. I don't don't think they did that. I just remember there being like a weird announcement of, you know, obviously we all seen something. This is all what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember instantly like kids just crying and freaking out because they have parents from the military. And they're like, my parents are going to be deployed and what's going to happen? And we're under attack. And so instantly we're like, okay, I got to figure out how to calm this down. These 30 kids are terrified and looking at me to be that kind of. The voice Tommy of reason voice, and yeah. shit, yeah. And I'm like, I'm scared. You know? yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yep. calling my girlfriend. like, are you all right? Do you see this? What's going on? Is this real? Uh, and so you don't, you know, you're in a classroom. You don't really have a connection to the outside. It's hard. You're kind of in a silo. And so you're, you know, I think we had like that first like version of Motorola was, phone. Yeah, I was going like, say, you didn't have hey, like yeah, an yeah, actual yeah, phone. Smart, there. Like a Nokia one unit. <laughs> you're like, is this pulling this out the going, fucking antenna yeah, yeah. like this and shit? <laughs> yeah, dude. I so I was shit. trying to figure out what was really going on before we could say anything. So that was my first week. And I remember, so I always remember that week very right. distinctly. Like, shoot, if I can do that, I can do anything. Dude, and, and that's like, what a unique challenge, huh? Like the very, like, you're barely starting your career. And then this one, this event, this historic event happens and you're kind of like oh now i have to fucking explain this to these fucking kids never that happened I just met. before and he's out here trying <laughs> like, to deal with it with like yeah. 30 kids yeah <laughs> crazy. that's crazy dude okay so eventually you wound up at a uh, cano theo over here on the west side yeah um how was that like uh canuto like this Oops. guy did you go to cano theo like I, for well cano theo district oh yeah i went to um jose damian for okay. a year and then build childers like, oh nice throughout so, the whole time. our so, mom purposely so. like made us not go to cano <laughs> theo yeah. Yeah. like for real we she did in the district yeah but mom, like nope so you're, you're going gonna to lincoln yeah because like so we live obviously we live right there off montoya that yeah. was like cano theo district everybody in the neighborhood went to cano theo but since my mom works for the schools too uh she would kind of get us Bro, into you could whatever walk school. to lincoln from your house. yeah, yeah you exactly could, did. i did i would <laughs> yeah um but yeah it was crazy because she was like she steered us away from the cano theo she was like you go over there but uh how no, was no. that what was your experience like oh man i love cano theo i really do it's a special place and i've always worked in episd i was always in a big district um and so when i got the cano theo i realized quickly like oh man this is different because it's small and you don't have the same resources that you do in a large, you know, urban district. So right. we had to figure it out on ourselves. So to hone my skill as an educator, I think that was essential because it forced me to figure it out on my own, to do my research, to find really good, you know, programs for the kids. And Garantio is unique in that it's kind of like a hodgepodge of 
of demographics. You have your, tree, you know, the kids right there on Bosque trailers you know, that live right there walking distance. And then your farm, farm rural community f- kids. And then you have the, you know, the ones that live in freaking that little gated community right there off of Upper Valley. Oh, I know which one yeah. you're talking I about. I mean, they, they're all kind of deal kids. Yeah, so you're yeah, like, yeah. man, this is like a variation. I mean, I think yeah, you have kids with that, money, kids without yeah, yeah. money, kids that live on a farm and yeah, shit. Yeah. Know yeah. Money. yeah. And they're all in dress code. So you're like, I can't tell the difference <laughs> of you guys. So we're going to treat you the same. So. <laughs> you all look yeah. the same. Yeah, you all look the same. You're all like hoodies and <laughs> khakis. So who knows? Uh, but it was, it was really cool. And, you know, it's a tight, tight family. I mean, those, the kind of the teachers, the educators, even the district, you know, the superintendent, they all live pretty much in the kind of community. So there's a lot of pride. And at the and time, it goes back, right? Like oh, generations. Cause my generations. dad, he went to Canotillo and his brothers and all that and mm-hmm. graduated from there. And that was back in like the eighties, seventies. Yep. You know? Oh yeah. It's there's deep, deep roots. And, and even if they don't live in the area anymore, their kids will still come back to go to school there. And at the time, uh, the football team had was going to the final four, you know, making that pl- that push. So the, the pride was just mm. even more exaggerated. So it was, it was an easy transition to come in um kind of see where that campus is at and then take it to another level because i just kind of fed off of that positive vibes and i just used that to kind of change a culture and the, really make it amazing the, the middle school is that the one by uh, gallegos yeah, park it's the old yeah. high school, oh, That's the old high school yeah. we were just talking yeah. about that we were cruising over there yesterday or the day before and she was like is gallegos park even still there and oh, i was yeah. like yeah it's still fucking popping dude mm-hmm. there's people still playing uh they have soccer, soccer baseball, tournaments everything there, out there. Yeah. oh yeah that's what's up dude i i played uh my like minor league or minor league fucking like i played <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, minor triple a years okay. right there. i'm in melendez <laughs> over here and shit no i played like uh fucking what is it peewee baseball or yeah. whatever yeah, just literally. softball mm-hmm. fucking coach pitch whatever we that's where we we would play and like uh they had that the, the school was next to that big ass pool. They had mm-hmm. a big ass pool there. So I, I, I remember that. But um, how does it like uh, so when when do you uh, decide like uh, between being a teacher and, and wanting to become principal, like what makes you want to make that jump? Like, why were you not just content with just like uh, teaching and not really getting into administration? Yeah, so it was hard for me because I was a coach, too. I coached high school basketball. I coached, you know, some football. I coached track. Um, and so those are fun. I mean, that's amazing. When you're a coach, the relationships you have with the kids is at a different level. Some of my players are like my godchildren now, oh, shit. and uh, we still keep in that's, touch. So that's dope. Yeah, it's it's a it's hard to walk away from that because you're so invested. You think you're invested as a teacher. When you're a coach, you're invested even more. So like it becomes your life. Um, and so you're trying to balance the two, you know, as a juggling act, and uh, you can't. Uh, it's it's hard to walk away from. So when it was an opportunity was presented to me, it said, "Hey, you know, I have a, a position as an at risk coordinator at Urban High School." And uh, I think you'd be good at that. I've seen you with kids and it'd be a good segue. And I had just started working on my master's. Um, and so I was like, well, I don't know. I'm pretty set. I want to finish school, but I'm, I'm very open to risks. I don't say no to very much. Sometimes that's right. a, to a fault, right? right. <laughs> Try this. Okay. Uh, uh, it's hard for me. To, I, 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 I jump feet first very often. Right. And in my career, I've always taken those same risks and it's always been very good for me. So uh, the, the job was unique. <laughs> I'd never even like, other than playing football or being at the gym at Irvin, I'd never like actually been to Irvin. So I hadn't like, been to the campus and <laughs> you didn't know what, didn't like, know what I was yeah, getting into. Like, get into. Yeah, sure. Might as well. And I applied for the job and I got the job and, and um, and you said at risk coordinator. At risk coordinator. Okay. So I didn't even know what that was. Like, I, okay. I, I already know that kind of so, sounds like you, you can tell <laughs> yeah. by the title. You're like, yeah. all right, I'm working so, with struggling kids. All right, so but, these aren't going to be the straight A <laughs> students. <laughs> I like taking risks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're talking about risk. So it's hilarious. So this is my favorite first day on the job story. <laughs> so Irvin is no joke, right? It's, it's got its own unique challenges, obviously, you know, being in the triangle and just it, with Chapin opening a lot of higher performing kids choose Chapin and, and Irvin has lost out a lot in some retrospects, but it's still got some amazing kids and teachers. But my first day on the job, it's actually the Friday before I'm about to start. So I'm, you know, wiping away tears and the kids are all crying as I'm tired to tell them I'm leaving. It's my last day. And I'm like, sorry. And then I get to Irvin, like a little early prince, like just come by, you'll see your office. We'll walk the campus. Well, I pull up and there's all these cop cars and like, <laughs> I, I'm like, what the hell? So I, I, I get out of the car and the principal's running full speed, throws a walkie talkie at me. goes, there's a huge rumble on this football stadium. we got to go clean it up. I was like, oh, okay. So there I go running. Judge Haggerty's got like a kid in a bear hug on the cement. Like there's all these. And it's funny when I got there, I was like, what the heck is going on? There's like these skinny jean, like little dance crew kids. The rebels. The rebels. The rebels. And I'm like, dude, that's, yes. that's not going to work. This is going to turn out like that. <laughs> oh, that's so 
funny you said that because I can see that. Yeah, that's dude, that so Paso cool. back in the dude, day. Yeah, so they're like at their spike belts on their wrist and they're throwing oh, chingazos with their freaking that's spikes and like funny, trying to weave yeah. and wobble and like grab a kid. I remember and, those days, dude. Yeah, and, that so that was hilarious. my first experience with Urban. And I was like, then after the dust settled and cleaning blood off everybody, we're like, what the hell did I just get into? <laughs> what is this job? And then. I find out that I'm in charge of all of the freshmen that are in trouble of not graduating and figuring out how to keep them in high school. So I was like, well, that was fun. That okay. job was super rewarding. That's funny. He just pulls up. They throw, yeah, yeah, throw the they walkie. Let's go. throw a fucking walkie talkie at him and say, get in there. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. I think like the second day on the job, the principal was trying to like stop a fight and big old freaking linebacker, like Ray Mickens style, like throws him over his shoulder and the principal cracks his head on the cement. So we give him like a football helmet, like, Hey, wear this when you go out to stop. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was just crazy God time. Damn. You know what? That, that fight probably started over like some dance battle. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah Somebody sure. like threw the finger in your face. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They disrespect. The uh, disrespect was real out there that day. It was, it was crazy. But it was crazy. I mean, when I got there it was a whole new admin team. So we were all new and I think we had like 56 days straight of fights. Fuck. Yeah. It was just like, God it was damn. intense. <laughs> Yeah, so you have like the you know you have the gangs, the big ones that have been around forever, and they were just annoyed with these little crews, right. and the crews they they were tough, and they were trying to step up to these. I'm like, you're gonna die. Did anybody? Damn, did dude. they ever try to fight you? Like, no, no, their kids are cool with me. I mean, that's the one thing I've always in my career. Like, I'm not like you're, I'm here for you, and so there's no reason for me to ever right. cross you. Now, you may do something that I have to be a little firm with you, or I've got to you know set you straight, but I'm never gonna disrespect you, yell at you. Yeah, yeah, Mark had a fight club in the back. (laughs) (laughs) Right, you and you, 5.30, no gloves, glass glass shards only. Dude, that is crazy that you had so many days. It sounds like prison, bro. Yeah, Yeah, of continuous fights. Check this out, man. So it was, we were like, what are we going to do? We can't live this way. This is like, it is, was like prison. Yeah. So we can't have schools not even function at this point. So we had to call in the El Paso gang task force to come in and bring in the elders and say, hey, we need you to lead your crew to calm down because obviously these little dance crews are people we can't really control because they're a bunch of little kids that don't know any better. But you guys can control your people and you guys can have some sense and you don't want to go to jail. You don't want them in jail. You know, we know you got business running around here. We got to right. be smart about yeah. this. So Do it they did. School. Wait, yeah, they so were the, cool. the gang unit Got with like the fucking that heads, the same heads of the game. We met on campus. Holy shit, dude, it was it's awesome. So crazy, but what? it's because like that you guys like you had no other choice. It was choice, neutral. Right? It's always been neutral territory. Yeah, it was what like a twenty year old kid that's been there forever. Now we're talking like sixty year old men. No, like the leaders the, of the all leaders. the leaders. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. We're talking about elders that we had to be like, look, this is what's going so, down. Okay, so the Kick. school is Keep a neutral place because yeah. they recognize like, okay, that has to be the only safe haven for exactly at least. And so you guys were able to sit down with them and you told them, like, look, this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. We can't fucking do anything about it. Do you guys think you could fucking yeah, help we said, us out here? We'll, we'll do our best to, if there are actual charges against these kids that were filed or any violation they have, we can do things on our campus side to get rid of the little crew kids that are messing up. You know, as long as you can tell your, your the gang guys to just kind of ignore it and let us kind of do our thing for a while. Right. Once we can get two or because, th- you know, it's always like two or three instigators. Once we get them away whether we put them at the alternative campus or we transfer them out, right. then we can kind of have the peace. And it, it worked. I think Damn. within like, after that, we were fine. Damn, dude, that is crazy. I, I never know, thought that you, like they would actually like work together. Like oh, that. It, it's a partnership. Right. And, and you know, let's be honest, like there's businesses happening at school. So you're like, got to protect the business. Yeah. Right. Damn, dude, that is nuts. Fucking Irving, dude. It was awesome. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I always tell people, fight like, school for sure. <laughs> you work at Irving, you can work anywhere in the world. Like, you talked about your situation in Florida. I yeah. mean, Irving had like a, a, an essence of that. Yeah, that kind of sounded yeah. like it. Cause mm-hmm. I remember I was going to sub in eighth grade history class, and history was my major. So I'm like, yes, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually teach these kids. And the teacher next door said, if one of them doesn't kill each other, like, you had a successful <laughs> yeah, yeah. day. I'm like, how do you teach? She's like, you spend what? so much of the day dealing with mm. the behavior issues. And it's sad because there's kids there that are actually trying to learn yeah. better themselves, get themselves out of that situation. But yet, all the focus from the teachers and the leadership of the school has to be focused on that. Like, it's super sad. Yeah, that is crazy. So I'm, I'm sure, like, for you, Mark, like, you found yourself, like, being in the role of, like, kind of like a a role model for some of these kids, right? For like some of the ones that may not have like the best father figure around. Um, How do you feel like knowing that uh, kids look up to you and like, and they uh, recognize that you are, you're somebody that they can uh, like want to be like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that as an educator, every teacher, you instantly take on that role. You don't, even if you don't want it, you, you are being looked at as a role model from every student in your classroom. And then I had middle school. So 
you know, those middle school years are so impressionable. Right. At that time, most of the time, they're single parent households. They've lost their mom. They lost their dad. You know, there's there's so much need there that you really develop relationships just by listening to the kids, being compassionate, understanding and giving them some chances. You know, I'm all about restorative justice. You know, and even as a principal, I don't really come down hard on a kid. I just find a way to figure out what the issue is, how to correct it and make sure we don't do it again, whether it's through. Hey, you know what? We're going to do some manual labor. I remember, that's a cool thing with Gano Theo. I remember one time it was a big fight. And it was all the boys were on the basketball team. And they all fought each other. They were all jealous about playing time or something. And so I was like, oh, you guys can't be fighting. What's wrong with you guys? But, yeah, I you guys said, but, team, but you're not going to get away with this because all these little kids saw you and they look up to you. Right. And so you're going to fix the flower gardens in the front for the next two weeks. So at lunchtime, after they ate in my office, then they had to go out and clean the flower beds. And they had it's to like buy child them labor. Too. Yeah. I called the parents like, hey, are you cool with me doing this with your right. child? Like, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. But this cool, the, the funny thing that evolved is they own that flower bed. So if kids were like walking there, hey, get out of my flower bed. Like, they were like, oh, it was awesome. For the rest of the year, they sat there and patrolled them after school. And Nobody they was littering in that bitch or yeah. nothing. Yeah. But That's I also cool. got them like new drip systems. Like, hey, we're going to do this right. So, they, so that, those are ways to really change the, the, the behavior. And so I, I remember this one time. It just reminded me when I was in elementary school and Bill Childress, um, Instead of like PE, they had us all because they had just made this like walking trail throughout like the whole corner of the of the back. And then they wanted to put like bricks on the side of the trail. So they had everybody get a brick and then paint whatever they want on it. And then they had just like a few kids go out there and then start digging and started putting them on. We were out there for like three hours. Like I remember this one time they they were trying to make it like a fun thing. We're over here sweating, digging like (laughs) freaking holes, like putting these bricks by bricks, you know, like how is this fun? They were know? preparing you for the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, look at me now, construction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, Planting the seed. <laughs> I do bricks all <laughs> week, guys. Let me know. And we look for funny. masoners. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's crazy. So, like, what's what? What is one of the things that like you find least attractive about being an educator? Nothing. Nothing. I love Not my job. All. I never go. So, for all of the years, I don't go to work. I get to go do what I really love. Okay. Um, and I think most educators some deep take on shit that. right there. That's there's some deep some, shit right, right there. There are some tough days, especially in this new role, man. You're like, oh, this is tough. Cause you, you know, you have little things that happen and you find out about everything now and you're like, Oh crap. You know, I got to go help handle that. Um, but those tough days are so limited that the good days, like your graduations and the kids, when the kids figure out how to read and all those positive days outweigh it. And so it's really, I, the campus side especially was really just a really fun and fulfilling day. So you just look forward to it. And every day is super different. How was, how was your time in uh, El Paso High School? Dude, it's awesome. So I was an assistant principal there. Before I became a principal in County, I was an assistant principal there for about a year and a half. And so in that year and a half, I just fell in love with that campus, that history, how much pride those kids walked in the hall. I mean, they didn't tag anything. It was just so much. Like, everything was clean. Um, and so you're like, man, this is such a different place. And when you start meeting generations and generations and generations of families that have gone through there, it's yeah. just, how do you not want to do the most for that? Right. right. It's how do you not give it your all? And so I was at graduation the first semester I was an assistant principal and watching the principal hand out the diplomas with the school in the backdrop on the field. I was like, man, I want to do that. My next, like if I ever get a chance, I want to do that. I want to hand diplomas to kids on this stage, which means you gotta be the principal. And so when Cano Theo, and I had kind of gone in and did what I needed to do and I had the experience and I was kind of getting a little bored because like, oh, middle school's fun, but you know, it's not as exciting as high school. And El Paso High opened. I was like, yes, yes. like, let's go. I want back uh, because it is just such a special place. So you can do so many cool things and that community is so supportive and, and that, you know, it's just the mystique of that building is real. I mean, I've I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the oldest, <clears throat> uh, oldest active, right? It's the oldest active school that it was intended for in Texas. It's the oldest high school in El Paso. 1916, it opened the doors to students. Yeah, um, I think on the second half, we wanted to do, like, we wanted to ask you if you've seen any, like, crazy stuff that happened there. We'll save it. We'll save it. But yeah, we'll we'll save that for the second half. But I wanted to ask you while you were there um, in 2020, I don't know why I censored myself. Do you guys, did you you see that? I I said shit, but I said, I don't know why I did that. Um, Anyways. You're you're next to an educator. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm like. I can't cuss in yeah. front of the principal like, oh, man, the true. fucking principal's here <laughs> <laughs> like god damn it uh dude okay real fast so um before i was before we get into this question the one thing i didn't like about so my mom worked at fucking school mm. at lincoln with yep. us while we were there so i hated that shit because like anything <laughs>
mean that I did wrong. You knew. Like, it. if I you looked the it. wrong fucking way in class, like, the fucking teacher would go fucking tell my mom. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, I couldn't, like, I just, I would had not its want that. pros and cons. It, yes, it, it was. Did. Yeah. Because what were you, the pros for it? Well, okay, so, like, one of the pros, um, okay, so at Lincoln, they had a security guard, right? Oh, yeah. And his name was, I oh, fucking, Fernie. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Fernie. Fernie. Yeah. Okay, so, um, what, dude? Well, well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I, can't I, can't hear you. Next I can't hear you. Uh, fuck it. Okay, Fernie, he was a security guard at Lincoln, and he found a Game Boy, and he gave me the Game Boy because nobody ever claimed it. Oh, so okay. that was cool. That was Sweet. a fucking perk. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. A free Game Boy. I'm going to report that. And then I lost it at Walmart. So, oh. you know, it kind of just <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> like the world's just, poetic justice. Yeah, yeah. It well, just another sucked. pro is all the teachers knew you were, you know, who your mom was. Right. So whenever they needed something ran to the office, it was you. Right. So it's right. like, oh, I don't need to go back. I'm going to go hang out with my mom a little yeah. bit. Just, you yeah. Know. But and then when you forget <laughs> money on, you know, snack day, you're like, right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mom's or, here. or the lunch lady would just be like, you're good. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. could fly. <laughs> lunch Lady give you extra. Yeah. I need six pudding. All right, six pudding. Okay. Here's an extra slice. Uh, Until you forgot an assignment. <laughs> my mom is my mom, dude. Sonia, <laughs> mother. Yeah, I don't think you know her, dude. I, so I don't know. I have a question no. going back to the whole twenty. <laughs> 20. 20. Um, so Christina's a nurse, right? Mm, yes. And you're an educator. So boom, twenty twenty hits. And Christina's and his wife too, yes. by the way. Yes. So two of the largest industries that were impacted by mm-hmm. the. T- pandemic how did you guys navigate that like so in your my head? poor wife man she's a so she is a nurse but she's also a doctor of nurse practice and a family nurse practitioner who is the ceo of centro san vicente which is a nonprofit healthcare clinic on alameda and they have a couple of remote sites like san Eli, pebble hills at downtown uh, so she i mean our worlds changed instantly right both our worlds um she was on the front lines of it so you're talking about like those battle scars of nursing that have those the masks, hours the and masks. masks. Yeah, yeah, just, I mean, she had, as the CEO, she really had to figure out how to change how their organization functions and switch to remote healthcare if you can. And then making sure that everybody that walked through that building had been, has screening. And so, yeah, she, she's badass though. She actually led this country in her check-in procedures. And so after she did what she did to implement check-in and then start getting uh, vaccinations and tests done, she was the one that would like share with the rest of the federal entities on this is how you do it. And so that was pretty cool. And so, um, you know, there, of course the revenue goes down because not as many patients are coming in, but she's getting all this extra funding for doing all the screens and all the tests and then getting vaccines. in. I think she was one of the first, she was probably first or second clinic to get the Moderna vaccine. Oh, well, oh, wow. she was like popping it out to everybody. And then the cool thing she did was she said, okay, I'm going to get all of the healthcare providers at all the federally funded low-income clinics done first because they are the front lines. Like hospitals, obviously people go there when they're really, really sick, but for the everyday, so that, because you patients don't know they have it, right? There were so many issues where they didn't, they just so many didn't even believe COVID was real at the right. time. It was crazy days, crazy Chris. town. So they were like walking in all sick and coughing. So they got all of the clinic uh, people. So not just her clinic, but everyone. So like La Fe and Project Vida, all of those, she made sure all of those people were taken care of first. A round of applause to her. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Yeah, that is crazy. I didn't know like that she was that involved with like uh, being one of the first ones to actually get the vaccine in the city. And then uh, obviously you have to distribute it correctly, like you mm-hmm. said. And so you wanted to go to the people that are on the front lines. But that was the year 2020 is when you won principal of the year, right? I did. And so how was that? Because obviously like you're dealing with your issues, like with education and the pandemic and kids not wanting to do virtual or like yeah. you guys having to do virtual. Um, how was that? Like, why, why do you think uh, you were selected as a uh, principal of the year that year? You have to be nominated. And uh, I guess some of the colleagues from my district, some of the principals I worked with decided that I'd be a good nominee. And then uh, once you're nominated, you have to kind of fill out some information about what you're doing. At the time, um, I guess as I was on my third year as a principal and El Paso High was thriving and we were already kind of very digital as a campus. I kind of already had switched to being a little more integrated with the technology. And so moving from campus to virtual for us was a seamless transition. And so I was supporting a lot of principals and like, all right, do this, use this platform. You know, here's how you can check to see if the kids have access. And so we were we were leading and supporting a lot of hot campuses, the things we were already doing and prioritizing. So I think just having a little bit more involvement in our day-to-day operations. The principals appreciated the fact that I could help them with that. And I was sharing everything. And I, and I think that's what kind of helped at the time. Yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's interesting because 
Like, it's not like you guys were anticipating like a pandemic, right? But yeah. like you guys were already using technology that was already yeah. there. And, but you guys were just trying to figure out how you could uh, make that technology work for you guys. And how could you implement it without people freaking out, teachers freaking out? Because like, yeah, I mean, like in my work, we started doing like virtual stuff and like people were like, like, oh, I can't do this. I can't fucking work from home. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah. this? Like, I don't have internet at my house. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like how, how it forced people to change so much. Oh, instantly. It, you didn't have a choice. Right. But, you know, in education, you've got a variation of families. So we had so many kids without internet. Right. And so we were like distributing hotspots, like, oh, go to your house. Just leave me at the door. Don't touch me. You know, we were doing (laughs) things like that. And yeah, we were trying to be safe and like, we'll leave you a hotspot and just send me your info. So we were doing that. We were like, go to McDonald's. They've got Wi-Fi for free. You know, kids are figuring out a way. Right. And then we had a lot of kids from Wattis that, you know, they're like, I can't even log in. Right. Like doing good luck with that. And so they would try. When the minutes were out, they're like, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, so it was a challenge. It was hard. And and half of our campus, you know, is under, is at El Paso High was, is underserved. So you had to make sure that those half were also uh, had the means and the resources. A lot of times we couldn't even reach them. Like they right. they're even like, you know, we hope that your parents register you and put your phone number right. in, but half the kids are like, this is not a working number. Right, not, right, right. Not, yeah. not much we can do, but we did, we tried to do home visits. We, you know, had Wi Fi's being distributed from school buses. You know, say, hey, go to, you know, just be in the parking lot. If you can just get to campus and work from outside the building in the air, you'll have Wi-Fi. Oh, shit, still dude, going that's outside. crazy. Yeah. yeah, you had kids, like, freaking lined up and outside, like, in some shade, just trying to just get the Wi-Fi. Up right there. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah, so we were, we were very flexible, and I, I was the only one in the building for, I mean, that whole time. I would, after the first few weeks when, like, the whole city was locked down. Right. And I would be back at the campus, and I would be like, here, you know, I'll open the door, do what you need to do, get you what you need. And I let everybody else stay home because it wasn't safe. So do you think like uh, COVID in a way, like obviously not actual COVID, but the way it impacted the education system, do you think that like kind of messed up some kids? Oh, absolutely. It's we. Okay. So we all experienced trauma, right? Right. It was a different type of trauma for a youth, a young mind who's developing, still developing. And you're, you're now taking away something that is very necessary, a necessity for their development. Right. You just janked it away into, you know, in an instant. So you have a lot of those psychological challenges that are going to kind of linger. Um, there's a lot of isolationism. There's a lot of, you know, anxiety and fear. And then our, our kids had lost a lot of family members, you know, whole family households died because of COVID. So you dealt with loss too. And then you say, okay, COVID's gone, jump back into the building. And of course it's not going to be the same. And, and, uh, we, the thing with the virtual world and this we're experiencing now, even though we've had like a year kind of a, of our new normal, is kids don't really they feel like I don't have to go back to school. I can do yeah, this remotely. Right. I can like, do this shit. Yeah, I don't need yeah. you to be in that room with right, me. Right, but right. in their minds, they're right. But on the psychological side, on the developmental side, it's very far from the truth. It, there is a balance to it now for an older kid, right in high school. But your elementary, middle, ninth, and tenth graders, like you, you need to be in the building because right. there's still so much that you need to learn and develop, and you need that social interaction. You need how to, you know, get support from your peers. But then you also need to come in and get some psychological treatment. So. We put up, we, you know, in our campus, we're one of a few that actually had three um, emergence counselors on site so that the kids could have that therapy instantly if they needed it. And they used it. It was, it was a hard transition year last year. Yeah, man, that's impressive too. And like what, like, I think it's cool that you were saying like how like flexible you guys were like, Hey, you know, we kind of don't know what's going on. So, you know, if you have to come fucking sit under the tree and, and get our Wi-Fi that way, then, you know, that's how it's got to be. Mm-hmm. But it's always like, it's, uh, it almost seems that you we're never going to like, uh, like your focus was always to make sure that like every kid still had that opportunity in a yeah. way. And it, and no matter what the obstacles were, uh, you guys were going to provide them with the solution, which is, I think that's commendable. Give them a round of applause. Yep. <laughs> hey guys, just think that's every educator in the United States. Like that's, that's not unique to us. I mean, I think all of our teachers, like just like the nurses, like kicked ass to try and figure it out, you know, because it was for kids. And so right. they, it was really a challenge. Just and imagine the pressure yeah. and, the, and the stress. That, uh, you know, that and it's puts so depressing. Like I would go, so we would still have to, you know, do unofficial walkthroughs and check in on the classes. And I would go in like, no, you have guys seen Zoom boxes, uh, right. just names, right? Just or a bunch of a Zoom cat boxes. and some random yeah, yeah. Like what? This is so sad. Like, yeah. this, like this teacher is like trying and right. trying to go through that lesson, and there's like no interaction. Like, right. what do you guys think? It's crickets. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you guys even there? Hello. You know, it was so sad. Yeah. And you teacher know what's team. crazy is like even college courses are like that. Yeah. So imagine like high school, like dude, those kids are they're fucking playing. Yeah, yeah, they're, and shit. yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> they're fucking chilling, dude. Yeah. Okay, so we're coming up on 44 minutes here. Uh, so we're we're gonna do guys 
because we're going to take a quick break. Uh, once we come back, we're going to tell uh, talk to Al- uh, I was going to call you Alex. I don't know why. Uh, you remember Alex Pause? I from, don't. Uh, he went to Lincoln. You remember him, right? Pause? Yeah, Alex. He was a big guy. Uh-huh. Drives a Mustang now. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Does he have like his cigarettes rolled up in his cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we're going to talk to Mark about uh, fucking if you've seen any crazy stuff at El, El Paso High. Uh, we're going to talk about the history. Misa was telling me some of the history behind that school. Crazy, so we'll man. get into that. Uh, we have trending topics. The Choco Taco Dude, has been bad. discontinued, but <laughs> it might be just a, a media campaign. So we'll get into that. You think so? Well, well I'll, I'll sure tell you why. Mm. So, um, But we'll get into that. We have trending topics. And so then we have five random questions at the end. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Try to replace me, but bitch, I want to recon. You know, I be speed racing up on the highway 95. Look, I don't give a fuck why these niggas hating on me. Oh, wait, because I got your bitch tripping on me. She said my love for methods and got her leaning on me. Spanish mommy with that accent, bet she call me Poppy. Okay, yeah, she be hitting my phone like when all right, guys, we are back from break. Episode 135, Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. The friend of the podcast, Mr. Mark Paz in the building. Hello, yes, hello. Sir. Hey. hey, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, dude, oh, for man, sure. it's fun. Bro, this whole uh, education thing has got me, uh, you know, really, uh, it's got me real jazzed up, you know? Yeah. You ready for <laughs> change the major. Change the major. He's like, summer's off. Yeah. yeah. Spring break. So when is your summer over? You're almost done, right? Your summer's uh, almost. We, the kids come back Monday. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. Monday. Okay, so this is the very end of the mm-hmm. summer for Mr. Paws here. Last mm-hmm. weekend. Fuck. I don't get summer. I haven't, when you're an administrator, you don't eat summers are your busiest time. Oh, shit. Oh, that's wow. crazy. Mm-hmm. To the contrary. Okay. Yeah. There you and go. then. Of course, I'm at central office. So there literally is no summer. Right. You guys are fucking nonstop, huh? It is nonstop. Yes. So what? Um. Okay. So EPISD is by far the biggest school district in El Paso, right? It's the biggest school district and the second largest employer in El Paso next to Fort Bliss. Holy oh, shit. Wow. Damn. So they have more fucking employees than the city does? Yep. Oh, wow. That is crazy. I didn't know that. That's fucking nuts, dude. That's a lot. That's a yeah, lot. that is crazy. So, all right. So, Misa was talking about um, mystery. Um, Misa, Misa's a big history buff here. Yeah, yeah. I was, big I history mean, guy. Yeah. And, and we were talking about El Paso High School, and and everybody's always known that El Paso High School is very old. Um, mm-hmm. It opened its doors to students in 1916, and I think I was reading that uh, even before they had like buildings there, like in the, in the like late 1880s, they had some buildings for schools and stuff there as well. Yeah, it was Old Main. It was called the Old Main Campus. Right, Old Main Campus. And then also learned that in with the early 1920s, uh, they changed the name for a year to Sam Sam Houston. And they changed it. Um, Man, you did your research. Good yeah, job. They, dude, they he's changed a history it. guy. Yeah, that's awesome, they dude. changed it for a year. And then it, during that time, the, the KKK... Mm-hmm was part of it so they got voted out and they changed it back to El Paso High School you're right that's exactly true wait so the KKK was part of like like well they were in El Paso right right yeah okay and so they they were the ones that changed the name to for Sam Houston to Sam, Sam Houston, Houston. Houston. Okay. Right. I didn't but know then that. it was like a public protest against yeah, right. the name people are like, like what's going on that. now Wow, that's crazy. And at that time when they were building that high school, also, um, the stadium fits what, like 12,000 people, 10,000, 8,000, something like that? So I've heard two, I've heard 20 up to 20,000. Wow. And about 12. About 12. Yeah, yeah. I think and people are bigger. I now, think it was so. like the <laughs> second biggest um, stadium out of concrete at that time yep. in the nation. That's crazy. So when you went to El Paso High, like, um, did they? Did anybody like tell you about all this history, or is it kind of like? Yeah. Oh yeah, you. The, I mean, when you, you walk in that building, class. you take the class. You're like, okay, the first <laughs> test is what year was your school born? Oh right. shit! What's the fight song? Like the history is a it's part real. of the everyday. The kids, right. the freshman orientation is literally an entire like forty five minutes of just that exact history, and you have an alum who comes and teaches it. Oh, sure. And then they even have like a Jeopardy game later to kind of reinforce it. And make That's it awesome. Yeah. I was also seeing because you know you know now El Paso High School is also known for its you know. The, the haunting, you know, and all this stuff and, and ghost stories. And they got some things. And I was looking, <laughs> I was things. looking at it <laughs> and I was like, well, there's got to be a reason why people, if they see something that they're there. And, you know, I, I saw that in World War Two, it was used as a morgue at mm-hmm. one point, you know, because of the, the Spanish flu was going yep. around and everything. And and I think there was a, also that story that, you know, most famous story is that a, a student slid her, her wrist and then jumped off a balcony. Or anything like that and i also heard that some kids that snuck into a basement and there's classrooms down there that hadn't been touched in like since i don't know a long time 
Anything? All true. God <laughs> damn, dude. Misa, congratulations, dude. Facts. That's but, like the most prepared you've ever been yeah, for yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Facts. he was on the Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> he was fucking he was like changing yeah. it for Wikipedia. Like yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay. No, it is. It's so that's the unique pieces. There's those stories. So uh, one of the things that we hear is that during the Spanish flu, they actually it was the morgue. They were bringing patients because it's cold. The basement is pretty chilly. It's like. I would say 25 to 30 degrees different than what's outside. Shit. And damn. so when the hospitals are inundated, they had these people with five, you know, fevers of 106, 107. Take them down there. Take them down there. It's cool. You know, there's no air conditioning in El Paso at the time. Right. Um, and so they're they're able to get, you know, some temperature relief, but then they end up dying in there. And so you have tons of people that apparently that's that's exactly what happened. <laughs> dude, that is crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. And I, like, I never I never realized like how old that, that school is. I, I mean, I knew like, my great aunt and them, they went there, but I didn't realize like at the turn of the century, like this shit was already like, it was already a facility. It wasn't El Paso high, but it yeah. was already being used in some fucking fashion. And so do you like, I mean, Pancho Villa was walking around <coughs> during that mm-hmm. time. dude. So there's escape tunnels that would lead from downtown to there. What? Okay. But they like the city, Had like they like, tunnel. they closed them up, right? Yeah. They're, they're all, they're okay. all closed Maybe. off. Like, yeah. Holy shit. Dude. You can still get to like circle the Seven Eleven down on Stanton. Like you could, you could, if you needed to get down there, but it's holy pretty tough. Shit, it's dude. barricaded pretty, pretty tightly, but you okay. can. So is there parts of, of the school that is like closed down to students? So there's a few. Um, <laughs> that's so crazy. I don't, so it's hard guys for me to talk about these things because I still work for the district. Right, right, right. Um, right, right. And you have a lot of potential break-ins because you always have those kids that want to be oh, like weekend ghost hunters trying to break yeah. in. So every weekend I'm like freaking broken glass. Yeah, and, don't be doing that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, don't avoid the, You're still against a lot. It's a federal yeah. felony. Um, and then the every week I would get a call from like the ghost tours or ghost hunters or all those shows that want to come in and do like readings and seances and i have to always tell them no um, and the reason i tell them no is because a you, you're trying to slow down the the traffic at night people you know kind of trying to get in illegally and then b it's a fundraiser for us to go down like we would charge people during the halloween time our theater kids do as a fundraiser for 10 bucks <laughs> to go down and they make it even scarier uh, than it really is so right. so i'm like hey that's your huge twenty thousand dollar you know your fundraiser so yeah. i don't want to take that right away. right so we keep that one year for it to be exclusive. And then I let the alumni do um, 10 bucks I, to shit your pants. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's scary, man. I, I have gone down by myself, but I don't like it. So um, so when you like when you're there by yourself, like, do you feel like like that there's like a presence there some, like, you, or something? It's weird because it's the in. if you've ever been on the inside of the main campus, it's a lot of windows. All the old hallways are like French door looking windows. So there's a lot of glass and. So I always feel like there's someone watching you from out. I was like, <laughs> you tunnel vision wherever you're going. And then I do not go on to the fourth floor at night. <laughs> He's like, no. I don't do it. No. I, so when I was, I was an assistant principal one year and I was delivering jackets for the faculty for Christmas. We had to like, like fold them up with ribbon and card. I walk into a fourth floor science room, which is the one next to where she jumped. And um, I put the, the jacket on the teacher's desk and I could just, in my peripheral vision, I just see or hear somebody like take their finger and run it down the mini blinds like i'm like ah oh. like every, every, everything all my hair is like i'm out i'm out nope yeah, yeah. nope nope she was nope. like no nope. i'm out Holy. it was like vivid and loud was i like, was hey. thinking you probably saw a couple of like ghost students fighting in the hallway or something you know hey. no, you so there's a little girl um and we think that's part of the spanish flu Fuck. situation and she plays and she plays in the building and so you hear her she does funny things, leaves stuff, moves stuff. That that is <laughs> constant. And then there Dude. is the girl. There's the high school student. When Dude, was that? that when when did so that happen? Good. What so year was that? that? I don't know when it happened. I, I want to say in the 40s because I think what the story is that the fo- the boyfriend played football and he dove into the end zone and he broke his neck on the goalpost. Oh. So you remember like those old go- like it used to be two yeah, yeah, they used to be in the, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, middle right. like it was unsafe. <laughs> it was just, yeah, like, Who, why that. were they doing that? <laughs> why were they doing that ever? Yeah, yeah. So no pads. Yeah. Uh, so a bunch of broken necks everywhere. Yeah. He jumped in, oh, broke his neck, died on the field, and oh then she was God. so distraught that she turned and killed herself. That's the story. Dude, that is crazy. Yeah. So do you think she's the one that's in these photos? I don't know. Maybe. So Wait. could be. <clears throat> That one, the I, this, photo. This one, yeah, I've seen it yeah. around. So, and it's on display in the cabinet at school. 
Really? Like you can walk and what, see that photo. That photo. Oh yeah. shit! I need to and that see photo's that. from like the uh, '80s, and so '86. Yeah. The cool part is see the girl with the pearl necklace next to her. Yeah. I met her this last two years ago. She came. I was like, "That's me." I was like, "Ooh." And I go, "Is there somebody next to you?" She's like, "No, nobody was next to me." No way. That is so Super cool. creepy. Wait, yeah. so she told you like, "No." Nah, yeah. She's like, "No, nah, there was nobody." nobody. Oh I was the end of the road. God. Yeah. Bro, what yeah. the fuck? Uh-huh. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> so. So. From your knowledge, Mark, no like paranormal like fucking people are allowed to ever. No, go we there. we district won't allow them, and they always say, "Well, it's up to the principal." But on my end, I would always say no. Right? Damn, that's crazy, dude. That's like one of those like what was that hotel that that DeSoto hotel oh, downtown? Yeah, DeSoto. Like, like no, no, the one that burned down. Yeah, the one that burned down. Um, they, there was like a, a fucking TV show from Austin that went there before mm-hmm. they did like a taping there, and then like a week later, that shit burned to the ground. So that's kind of crazy. There are a lot of <laughs> dwellers down there. Crackheads. Right. Yeah. yeah, dude. For sure, yeah, especially downtown. But, like, uh, do you, any other crazy stories that you might might have heard from, like, maybe a janitor or no, somebody that... So these are, like, my first-hand accounts, and I'll tell you my first town because I don't want to speculate. Right, right, right. Because these are what I've seen or felt. Right. Um, so my office is... My old principal's office is the only, like, conference room in the building. Right? <laughs> so it's this nice, long room. And it's got its own bathroom, and the doors are, like, these thick, heavy wooden doors and <laughs> oh, big shit. brass doorknobs and so frequently if i'm in my my office by myself the bathroom door would go and then just open you're like (laughs) so i would always tell like leave the door alone and just kind of like go shut it not right now i'm busy (laughs) not now (laughs) dude no that happened a lot (laughs) and then when i was an assistant principal my office was like at the very end of the so if you bring up like that picture of the campus it's all the way you're facing the the original part of the school, which is the front of the school, actually. That's the front of the campus, you know, with the beautiful col- uh, columns. Right. The back of the campus is what's on Schuster because that didn't exist. That was dirt. So everybody would walk up from the community up to the front of the school, which is what you see there. Oh, okay. That makes and sense. So that far left corner office, like second floor, you know, right there that overlooks the stadium, that was my old office as an assistant principal. And when I would, when I got there, I, I decorated an office and I put this like black and white photo behind my desk of two chairs overlooking the lake i thought it's like oh it'll be nice and soothing for the kids when they come in all pissed you know it'll be nice <laughs> and um i would walk in every morning first day it's on the floor not broken just on the floor i was like that's weird i check the back the cord is all still intact next day come it's on the floor four days in a row like hanging it's literally just on the floor on friday when i walk in it's shattered <gasps> what and i was like oh hey, okay i guess you don't like this picture i got it all right i leave it so to not give in i still put it like on a filing cabinet in the corner and then i put a new painting there it was like a bl- tr- blue tree, like this cool glass. So it looked 3D-ish, and it never messed with it. They like that they one. They like that one. It's just not like <laughs> it. It's <laughs> like, 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 like a black and white <laughs> photo. That's crazy. It was. I was like, there's... God so the nail bless. was always there. It was like, I was like, all right, there's got to... Something happened. Nope. Yo, Didn't dude, matter. I'm still tripping out about that football player, man. That guy gave his life for the team. Yeah, he did. <laughs> there's a scholarship. There's dude, a scholarship in his honor. Crazy. There's this, since then. There's been a scholarship in his name, and so there's a scholarship that the kids get. No uh, way. Yeah. Fucking, Mises is like he really laid it all out on yeah. the field. Like that. <laughs> Can you imagine the locker room speech? Yeah. He died for you. You can at least freaking run. He gave his life for you guys out there. And you're saying you're thirsty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. You're, you're an asshole, me. So, so much. It's just true. I just <laughs> couldn't stop thinking about it, man. Crazy <laughs> stories, bro. Yes, dude, crazy stories for sure. Fucking El Paso High. I've only been in there one time. I think I had like an, an orchestra performance or some shit back in the old day. When I was okay, little, so, yeah. we had our little bowl uh, for Pee Wee Football. Our championship yeah, was there, man. I remember. That was pretty cool. Were you with the tribe? You know, I was with the Sun Devils. It, oh, we we okay. won it back in like '99 or something like that. They still play that game there, dude. You know what's crazy is I didn't realize what you were saying that like the front of it is actually the stadium side. Yeah, yeah. Because back then Schuster wasn't a fucking thing. Well, if you go if right. you go up, there's that picture of like the from the from the sky view you can see right yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. Right, but like I always thought it was the other way around because you know when I first went there, I went you know through yeah, Schuster, you, you know, so up. I didn't know better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that shit's badass, dude. And I think that it's also ranked like one of the the top like nicest looking fucking uh, football stadiums, number two in right? the country by ESPN. Dude, that's that badass, dude. Amazing. Cool. Just because of like the architecture and the way it's like like uh, settled into the mountain, like that. And I think badass. the city backdrop is also right. the selling point. It's that's called the Lady badass. on the Hill. Mm-hmm. Is that what it's the, called? Oh yeah, Lady oh, on the Hill. Okay. That's right. I didn't know that. It's the Lady. Now, nice. Are there any teachers that will refuse to? 
beach there? No. Because, no? Okay. no, no. I, I would be the first one. Well, because they're gone by like, well, <laughs> yeah, they're like, I'm down at four. By yeah, by four, they're like, I'm out. It's too dark already. Yeah, all the fucking crazy shit happens yeah. later on. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe. So I you know. remember like a, on TikTok or on Instagram, there was like that little picture that was going around where like the, there's somebody at the window. And the they get window. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's a custodian because there's like a little washroom area right there and I think she probably just turned the lights off or he turned the lights off. Okay. <laughs> so that one was... Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it was the fourth floor so it's like, ooh. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. The custodian from the 40s yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty, that the was dead funny. custodian in there just fucking flipping on switches. Who's leaving all these lights on? <laughs> so all you right. were talking about the, the being <laughs> in the theater for the orchestra, right? right. So we were... Uh, a couple of years ago, um, Jordan Sparks did a benefit concert at the at the auditorium. Her, I guess, her sister passed away in El Paso at the Texas Children's Medical, and so they wanted to do like a temporary fundraiser. Oh yeah, there it is. Like, oh, I mean, it's, oh. It's a temporary oh, okay. fund or a fundraiser to kind of make an area in her name, like dedicate a name. This is the bathroom, and there's like a little closet in there with. Oh yeah. That was like, <laughs> that was like okay. Okay. sticking to that. Story. So you were saying, so right, we're, we're meeting stuff. with Jordan's people and this is the middle of the day. It's like at three o'clock and I'm standing um, by the stage facing the balcony, but I'm like, I'm talking to the, to the group, but as I'm talking, I see somebody stand up in one of the balcony chairs and walk into the, what it looked like the wall. Like, you know, you see a peripheral vision, you just see someone stand up and walk into the wall. So I'm just in there and I'm talking to you, but in my mind, I'm waiting for that person to come back. I'm like, come back. Like, where'd you go? And then after like five minutes, I was like, oh, there's nobody like that person just walked into the wall. So <laughs> no, <laughs> that was like one no. time I'm like, oh, dang. And then it's funny because my student activities manager's like, you're right. I was like, I just saw her. You're like, I yeah, just yeah, saw yeah, a ghost. Because <laughs> like, it was in white. It was a white outfit. Stand up and then walk into the wall. Damn, like four, dude, had to go crazy. like five, five seats into the wall. Did you believe in like ghosts and stuff before you worked there? Or I'm what? Not, like, not or a, were you just I like, like yeah, not believe whatever. it? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. You know, there's it's too hard to not have right. like some kind of in between. But I just at that campus, there's just a lot more activity. Right. There's there's something there. Yeah. Something about that place. Chris, how much would it take for you to spend the night there? I mean, I would do it, like, but with the group. Like, I'm we not... Charge, <laughs> we, <laughs> sell, we charge $20. <laughs> Chris, that's that's the other fundraiser. $20 lock-in. We lock you in and, like, it's terrifying. Please. I would do it, but, like I said, not by myself. And we would probably just stay in one spot. We're not going to go walking <laughs> nah, around. Nah, 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 that's come like on. not the fun of it. Well, I mean, he just asked to spend the night. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you, we'll, we'd we'll, have do, to we'll do the next podcast from the basement. Guys. Oh! <laughs> Dude, we just have like another voice on the like yeah, yeah, just yeah. Out of yeah. that white noise. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, here's a, so here's a secondhand God story. Damn, this one is, is creepy. <laughs> this is a good secondhand story. So the prince, the new principal at Irvin is Robert Stives, and um, he was my testing coordinator back in the day when when he was there. And he used to come in, and it's on the first floor, which is underground. Like the first floor is actually the basement, and then there's a sub basement which has the tunnels and stuff. That's where those, <laughs> that's where those weird classrooms are that yeah. are down there. There are classrooms down there. Like man, we're in trouble and How had to teach in here. There? Bad teaching. I don't know. Like, <laughs> the detention was down there. I don't know, oh, but there's shit. classrooms down there. Um, they're all storage crazy. area now. Send up to the hole. Yeah, send them down. Lock them in. Um, <laughs> so he was he was in there during the weekend doing some work, and he took his sons with him, and his sons had those little toy walkie talkies. And he said that he was in there, and the sons are like, "Dad, these don't work. These don't work." So he's fiddling with them, and then there's a voice on the one of the walkie talkies, and both kids are in there, and he's right, and he's holding one. The other son has the other one. They're little, and he hears, "What's your name?" And he goes, don't answer that. Like he tells us, don't answer that. And he goes, come play with me. And he goes, oh, we're out of here. Turn those things off. No. Turn the batteries out. And blow. Yeah. He goes, he swears to that story. Yeah, I would have thrown and those I'm like, fucking walkie talkies in the trash. What the hell? Like that was, that was the scariest one. Like some random white noise voice. Dude. Come play with me. Come play with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open the door. Fuck yeah, like that, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, oh, my God. God. And, like, I don't know if I, how, like, scared. I, like, right now I say I'm not, I wouldn't be scared. But in, in the, the moment, moment yeah. I'd be fucking be shitting scared. my fucking well, like, Dude, like, it, I'm glad it's only 1.30 in the like afternoon. Cause, but the girl didn't scare me because it was, like, the middle of the day and I had right. people with me. It just how, like, it was just something. And yeah. It, and, again, I wasn't, it was the middle of the day. It just kind of caught my corner of my eye and I just noticed it. I'm like, that's weird. But it's kind of fucked because you're like, oh, fuck, I just saw Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I was like, okay. You can't say that to the people you're talking to. He's upset that he saw it. He's like, damn it, bro. I know. It's true. And he can't tell anybody else because they're like, dude, this is nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to lose Jordan Sparks. Oh, fucking crazy. She's going to go to Bowie. All right. So this is what we're going to do because I'm scared shitless right now. Oh, dude. 
So what we're going to do? You want to sing a happy song? No, we're not singing a happy song. <laughs> right. Look at Amanda playing more scary yeah, videos. Talk about Chaco Talk. I like All right, that so show. yes, what we're going to do now is should we have Misa introduce Amanda introducing the topics? Is that what we should do? What do you think, Misa? Yeah, yeah man, go if ahead, you want, man. And right now, it's time for the trending topics with your girl, Amanda. All right. So on this week's segment of trending topics, the first one that we have is the Choco Taco. Choco Taco. Well, Don't you it. ever disrespect it like that. Hey, Choco? I never ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Choco <laughs> Whoa, had, it, had to lay down the, the law right there. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Give me some more music. music. Dude, you had a fist that whole time. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> it's, it's like I saw a ghost or something. <laughs> I'm still reeling from the last segment. Okay. So um, apparently Klondike has announced that they are discontinuing this um, well-known ice cream man or ice cream truck treat. Right. And it has the internet like just in a complete tizzy. Going wild. Yeah. Instacart, you know, their searches <coughs> for it are up. Um, I pulled up eBay, what these things are. <laughs> oh! I got a box in my fridge. Bro, <laughs> Bro let's start slaying those right now. <laughs> but you know what? Like, I bet the ice cream men out there right. have that in their uh -huh. freezer. You they don't it. even know about this craze. Right. And like, they're bling, still bling. selling it for a bling, bling. Right, right. Yeah. Fuck. That's how they started, right? That's how I read. They, yeah. they started off like the ice cream truck. Only ones. Yeah. Choco Taco. And dude, you know what's crazy is like uh, somewhere like, I guess, um, you know who else was very mad about this? Fucking our boy Chris Molina. Uh, when I showed him the topic, he was like, bro, I hate when fucking people go crazy for shit that's being discontinued. He's like, it just shows how bad like or how much humanity sucks, because I think what they're doing is. They're, like Twinkies, right? Yeah, like the Twinkie thing. That's what he got mad about. He's like, it's like fucking Twinkies, bro. Twinkies they said disappear. they were going to fucking disappear. Yeah, they, they, they discontinued back. Twinkies they for did. a little bit, and then, bam, they brought them back. Damn, yeah, they got all the rage, it's and like, then they so I got them! Yeah. So like, how come they can't do the Zima? <laughs> <laughs> He's still waiting for Zima! <laughs> Dude, I got my Jolly Ranchers Bro, ready. Man. Do you remember? Do you remember that drink? <laughs> yeah. They're Pull up young. Zima right now. They're too young. Z I M A. I remember that shit. Dude, Damn, I, I forgot about that. Bro, I remember walking like in the desert, like back in the day, with Zima bottles all over the floor. <laughs> dude. Yep. From, yes, like, dude. from high yeah. school kids from nineties. Damn. So was that like the Smirnoff before Smirnoff? It was Smirnoff before what? Smirnoff. Oh, yeah. Shit. It was like after B and J. Right. Like in between, and when like it was Zima or Forty, you take a pick. Right. Because I, well, by the time I was uh, uh, old enough to drink, Zimas were long yeah, gone. We yeah, like that shit was fucking. Yeah. But you, you probably those. weren't even able to drink. Those, they look huh? like yeah. like like straight up vodka <laughs> fucking bottles, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like a like, great time. So it, had like, <laughs> <laughs> it had no flavor. It was like a club. It was like like it, so it like was carbonated like water, water, right? Yeah, it was like a hard seltzer. Okay, but it messed you up. So it just was like nine percent alcohol. Fuck, it's malt liquor, man. This did its job. No wonder they took them off yeah. the shelf. Yeah, they're like, hey, there's too many drunk girls around <laughs> right, us, dude. God and then God. we figured out in Wattis, like they would drop Jolly Ranchers or they put so grenadine that's what this whole and stuff. Zima, Zima, I don't make them a little festive. <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> All right. So okay. somebody like R.I.P. Zima. Some marketing guy probably was gonna say, "Hey, we're gonna nix this. Go get so many sales, and we're good." So then right. he created this whole internet craze. Right. So yes. thirty thousand percent. Thirty thousand percent of Christ. searches. But did you guys order this at the ice cream truck? Because I mean, I nah. did once. I, it didn't seem yeah. like it was a number one. I've dabbled in a Choco Taco before. <laughs> I, yeah. I get ever those had Ninja one. Turtles with a fucking uh, the gum the eyes, gum you know? Yeah, yeah, those are better. But then they'd be like all fucked up, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tweety's eyes all the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tweety, the Tweety Bird ice cream was also fire, and the Batman, too. Was a strawberry shortcake. Uh, yeah. Let me get a dub sack and a Choco Taco. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dub sack? <laughs> okay. Bro, there was a guy, there was a guy, uh, an ice cream guy that would park there at Pepe. Lincoln. Pepe. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this guy would Genius. sell like the bolis, but they were huge. We called them dildos. <laughs> it's like, hey, sir, man, I own dildo. Who <laughs> yellow one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, cut it for you. Got dildo it. coming up. Paid for his kids' remember, tuition with that chuck. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. He's well, still around. I see him driving I around. I saw him dude. drive. But remember, they moved him to like the ditch. The outside. Oh, yeah. 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 They said you couldn't be on campus. Anymore. Yeah, 300 and we said, feet. We're going the way yeah, the fuck. Yeah, people would there. fucking go, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're on the fence. Yep, didn't fucking matter. Okay, what's the second topic we got? Let's get some more music here, Misa. All right, so this has been an ongoing 
you know, current event topic, this Brittany Griner, the WNBA player who's stuck in Russia because she what, got confiscated some With a stupid. Little bit of, a little bit of uh, THC. Don't matter. Stupid. Yeah. yeah so this week, um, for the, the Biden administration has said that they're offering to trade, you know, or swap. Prisoner swap. Yeah. Um, Proposed Trump, to trade. Trump, Trump for her. You can have Trump. We'll take. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That'd be a good swap. That would fair. be. I'm sure they'll they'll want. Well, can dunk. What but they're Trump trying do? to trade this like arms dealer. Uh, right, the most violent. Of course, his name's Victor because right. he's from Russia. He's from fucking Russia. Victor. But I, <laughs> Victor. I, I tell you what, I want Victor. <laughs> Victor Bout. I don't think that's an even swap. Well, yeah. well, well I also saw dealer. that um, they're not only just asking for this guy; they're as- asking for a convicted murderer too. Oh, they're going to ask for the right. house mm-hmm. because oh, you want this chick back right. so bad. How much you will in a pony? Right. Yeah, but if you, if you guys have noticed too, um, there's also a talk of there's another American out there. He was a teacher, I believe, yeah. right? And he they, sent, they sentenced him mm-hmm. for 14 years yep. of hard labor, yeah. and like nobody, like they're they're saying the like, family's saying that nobody that nobody's ba- paying attention, nobody's right. answering them, nothing, and then for her. You know they're willing to. We do could this do an trade. endless supply of choco tacos for Britney Grant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Putin would be like, just "Done, done, Let's go. <laughs> fucking Putin." Yep. But yeah, that's a crazy story, yo, for real. I don't know. What are your guys' sentiments? I don't know. Let's just leave her there, dude. Uh, you broke <laughs> just the law. Leave the guy. Yeah, you broke you the law. Okay, like yeah, it's marijuana. Law. You know, like uh, you're you're an advocate for marijuana, but dude, you you <laughs> come into our fucking nation and you break a law, you're gonna fucking you're and gonna have to go to jail for it. Same thing if you well, go yeah, somewhere but, else. But this is not you know? just. It's not just that cut and dry. Like you have to also think of why she's playing in Russia. It's a big part of the reason why she's over there. Like why she, should, she knew she no, no, should no, have known no, 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 she can't afford to play year round basketball. No, well, the thing is, is that the WNBA players they don't make enough yeah. money like playing playing just in the WNBA. They have to go elsewhere to get paid. They have a two season, which, salary. yeah, which is kind of fucked, dude. That is fucked. Like, oh, okay, then let's get her back then. <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is like <laughs> it's fucked because she has to go play in Russia. I'm sure she doesn't want to play in Russia. Yeah, like fuck Russia, dude. Nobody wants to just go to Russia. Like, you know what I mean? She's there because she's trying to make some money. And it's fucked that their fucking laws are so fucking outdated. And they're sentencing people to 14 years for some weed, bro. It's Russia. That's fucked. It's Russia, though. It's, I mean, yeah. You know, like- but also, it is also the time that we're in where, yeah. you know, there's a fucking war. So, of course, you're going to Yeah, fucking, like, you yeah. chose to do stupid on Dude, Joe Biden should be like, yo, dude, come on, man. Get I don't out, know. Get it's out of Ukraine fucked. and we'll give you this guy. What do you think about this, Mark? I'm not. I kind of feel like she did put herself in a compromising position in a right. country that is known for screwing americans over right. in a place where you and know don't just, fuck around i i don't know if there's anything that we can even do considering the time that we're in politically to help her and i just think she's screwed yeah it's fucked it's totally fucked dude. she should yeah. play for fucking russia then <laughs> might as well make she, some right? money she did i mean she played for one of their <laughs> club teams wherever you want to call yeah that's that's team. that would, should be a good deal she played like in the like, like, i gotta get out of here right now let me get all the thc oil and put it in my yeah. bag like why yeah but you know what's crazy too is that like misa said there's there's other americans that are in prison over there the teacher uh but the reason that they don't get the shine is because they're not a WNBA, yeah, she's a WNBA star. WNBA you know what I mean? It's that but simple. Also, my <laughs> thing on it, she yep. spoke out a lot against the U.S. And now you're begging us to go in. Well, I mean, so like any of us would be begging for for yeah, us to get a fuck like, out of right, though. That's you but know, that's you her. just bashed <laughs> this country. Like yo, and like, now you want this country to come in and be your knight in <laughs> shining armor. Well, like I said, any of us in that situation would be like, yeah, I said what I said. I'm sorry. Can we? Can you guys help me out? Yeah. Like, you you suck, but you show my country. Russian on, prison is no I joke. Know. I don't know. So what do you think, Chewy? Russian prison? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Good job there, Chewy. Okay, last topic here. Let's get some more music, Misa. All right, last one is EA Sports has Sheesh. announced that after, what, Sheesh. 10 years? <laughs> yes! Uh, they'll be bringing back the NCAA football About game. time. Fuck yeah. yes. I haven't played... Madden or any of those games since this is discontinued. Dude. Out of protest. Look at that. Damn. They went <laughs> worked. Loyalty. They're bringing it back. That's right. <laughs> 13 years later. I think, I played, <laughs> last time was in Vetter's bedroom when he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like Vetter, let's go. When Notre Dame was good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Damn. Yeah, so like NCAA, that was my shit. I Bro, used I used to, to love play I used to play the mascot games. Like oh, where, yeah, you where the team with the, the mascots. mascots. Yeah. Dude, that was dope. Yeah, and so I think what what's happening is now with the whole like <laughs> NIL deals, like uh, students can uh, make money off their image and likeness. 
uh, these uh, video game companies are like, hey, we kind of found a way to we can make this game again. Y'all get paid. The schools will get paid. We'll get we'll cash out and uh, we'll make a college football game. How about that? Good for everyone. Good for everyone. And I'm super excited. I love that game. That's a good game. That was one That'd of my be favorite cool. games. I mean, you you have like classic teams as well, right? You you'll you'll have like the Reggie Bush era and stuff. Well, yeah, they'll make like the O four like USC like yeah. Ricky I mean, Williams, right? you know. Fucking um, like they'll have like the the UT team with like Vince Young and shit. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The classic fucking uh, the good old days standout teams. <laughs> I used to fucking make UTEP like a national powerhouse in that bitch. <laughs> like, it, would, it would never happen in real life, but in my I'd, game it did. I'd make my player. <laughs> like, I'd make my own player like super buff. You know, you see this dude like four hundred pounds as a quarterback. <laughs> that would be bad though if they, like every all star from they ever played on that team could be picked to that all star team. Right. So imagine how good UTEP could be if you had like okay, you had Jones running back. Yep. Yeah, the Dems is your safety and your Cars, corner uh, Jordan Palmer. Yeah, Palmer. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, at that time, yeah. At the yeah. time, yeah, I think historically Jordan might be the best Yeah, he might be ever. the best quarterback we've had. Yeah. Johnny Lee Higgins. Johnny Lee, yep. dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Howard. Fucking Thomas yeah, Howard, Howard roaming yeah. the, the fucking linebackers. Have right Rodriguez there. when he's in his prime. Dude, yeah. And I mean, then and then I would use Ladinius Thomason and break the Russian record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Over and over, over and over uh, again. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fucking well, I'm excited about this. What do you what do you think, Amanda? I know you haven't you haven't said a damn word about this. Well, I don't care. <laughs> she doesn't like, care. Uh, although on our road trip, we saw some like pretty cool um, stadiums <laughs> of the NCAA oh, yeah. nice. teams, like Michigan, Michigan State. Who yeah, um, Arbor. Oh, who else did no, we go? Yeah, went. we went to um, University of Michigan, and there's Tennessee, Tennessee. the Vols. There's like four that we saw along our road trip. So I have a newfound appreciation for them. Oh, nice. I'm surprised they're not releasing it around Christmas. July well, 2023? No, because like for start of football the season. start oh, of the okay. college See, football season, uh, college starts like August, September. So okay. it's like right, you know, just in time sense. for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got to ride the wave. You know what I'm saying? Christmas Amanda's waiting July. for like a teacher stimulator game, you know? like <laughs> <laughs> She's going to sub in a great <laughs> history. <laughs> same classroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. She's gonna be breaking oh fights and getting but points. There, you know what you're getting for your birthday next year. <laughs> hey, I'm down. Honestly, that like I said, that was like one of my favorite games ever. He likes them on a PS4 though. No Xbox for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, so I know my brother Misa. <clears throat> All right, you? so let's do this uh, real fast, Mark. Before we get into the the random questions here at the end of the podcast, I just wanted to talk to you um, real real fast. You part of a uh, you're on the board for. Uh, what was it? The Down Syndrome Association. Ah, they misprinted that. So Christina is a board member. Oh, okay. She was until so recently, that I was that was I f- overworked with committees. So okay. I did like the Buddy Walk committee, the Whole Hog uh, committee, the ones that could help with fundraising and different events. Okay, they so let her do the the hard work, and I just did the fun stuff. Okay, <laughs> he's like, just take the credit for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. He's so, behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, because I read that on um I read that on your bio, and so I was thinking, obviously, um, when you have a child that yeah. has Down mm-hmm. syndrome, right? Yep. So, um, what, how you know, if you had to tell talk to parents that uh, you know have a child or children with Down syndrome, like what kind of advice or like words would you give them? Well, it's a first. It's a blessing. Alessandra is now nine years old. Um, was a complete shock to us. We didn't know at birth to have a di- we didn't have a diagnosis, so it was. As she was born, they show her to me. We go out and like they clean her up and then they whisk her away. And then like, oh, we'll be, we'll be back. And so I'm like, okay, what's going on? And then they come back and say, well, we think Alessandra has Down syndrome. We're going to do some run some tests, do some work. But I'm like literally in the room with five other babies. I'm like, she looks the same. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and I don't know if it was <laughs> denial or she read at that age, right, they all right, did right, look right, the same. Right. Um, well, and maybe so, they all had Down syndrome. Yeah, it was just a <laughs> unique time. And so we walked into. You know, my wife's room, we're like, hey, and of course, she's a nurse with the medical background. So we asked her, hey, they, the doctors think she might have Down syndrome. Of course, Christina's like, no, 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 I think she's fine. But I think in her like expertise at the time, she's probably all drugged up and didn't have a clue. But once she could figure it out, she was like, oh, yeah, we probably have, uh, you know, have some learning to do. So um, having we, of course, being in education, I work with kids with Down syndrome all the time. It's a norm. They're beautiful and fun. And, you know, I, they're the light of your day all the time. And so I, I was more scared about her for her and her challenges and the things she's going to have to go to, um, than, you know, anything else. And so we always say that Alessandra helped change a city. She really did help change the city because when we started doing our research and looking at what resources we had, it's very limited. You have like ECI and as a, as an organization, and there's very few after that. So when you look at Denver, things, in California, even Fort Worth, like they have great facilities, they have great, resources for our, for the for anybody with down syndrome and so you're like do we, well, do we need to leave el paso because this is going to sell her short and she's never going to have a fulfilling life um and so we actually attended a 
a little workshop or I guess probably just a community thing at um, Loretto opened up their one of their rooms for parents with Down syndrome and everybody was in there. You know, it was had young children or infants with Down syndrome and it was more of like a venting group. Like they were just scared and nervous. And so kind of getting to know them, you, we was like, hey, we got some educated people in this room. You've got a couple of nurses, a couple of educators, you know, some pretty smart people. You know, what can we do collectively to start making changes? And so as a group, we formed different organizations. So I think the first one we formed was the Down Syndrome Association of El Paso. And that was the, you know, all of these families that just kind of said, okay, we got to start doing things differently. So Christina created like a medical committee. And so anytime a child with Down syndrome was born in the hospital, they would notify us and we could take the parents like uh, information packets, share with them how the journey is going to go, early intervention to support their child and kind of bring them into the organization. Tell me you're fine. Like, it's okay. It's not going to be that hard. It's a blessing. They're beautiful. You're showing them what to yeah. expect at the same time. We had like right. the dads, like Down's dads. And so we'd hack up with the dads. We have some beers and like, hey, this is tough, but here's what we need to do for our babies. And then, uh, you know, had looked up. We had the Buddy Walk was the first thing that we kind of started doing as a fundraiser to kind of raise funds for the organization. And, and that's like a national event where the first Saturday of October, everybody does like a one mile walk in support of children's and families with Down syndrome. So we did all these little things and then it kind of evolved into one of the families saying, well, we probably need to do some early intervention centers like they do in Fort Worth and Dallas. So we checked out Kinder Frogs in Fort Worth. It's sponsored at TCU. And it's this amazing reverse uh, inclusion facility where half the kids are students with Down syndrome, half don't have it. It's their siblings or other kids so that they have that example. And so after touring that, we said, hey, let's do that in El Paso. And so it's a very expensive thing to develop and build a developmental center. So um, we partnered with the El Paso Foundation, and then that's where the Down Syndrome Coalition for El Paso became the next phase. At the same time, you had um, Maggie Moody and Judge Moody, whose daughter Melissa has um, started developing Gigi's Playhouse, and Gigi's Playhouse is also a national uh, entity, a learning center. That's at the mall. It's, it's, it's at the mall, yeah. Mall, it's yeah. on the park now, yeah. It used to be on, like, off Trowbridge, Toronto area. Now it's right there at Sunland Park, or Sioux Street. <clears throat> Sioux Street, or somewhere around there, I forget. It's inside of Sunland Park Mall. Yeah, that's a new one. So we were, that's where I was before here. I was getting math tutoring. So they had their piece too because there's nothing really for adults or you know they needed something else. So there's all of a sudden at the same time these you had this explosion of opportunities for children with Down syndrome, you know, because of these families just kind of doing more and knowing more and being able to find the resources to support it. So the Down syndrome Coalition has the Every Little Blessing Learning Center, which is a uh, 18 month to I think pre-k center and that one's in the shopping center where hobby lobby is right there on uh, mesa um, we have a bunch of different you know events throughout the year to support the families like christmas parties and easter hunts and we do a huge whole ch- whole hog barbecue and that's the big big fundraiser for the year and you partner with businesses like albertson's and every time you check out you can donate a dollar or two and that can come back to the organization as well so yeah we went from having nothing to within a four-year span having two big entities that really support the development of these children and the adults. Yeah, dude, that's impressive, She did, she did change. That's awesome. That's what yeah, so doing. we joke, like, that these group of kids at this time changed El Paso for children and families with Down syndrome. Run of applause. Yes, sir. Them. There you go. Good job, families. Yeah, let's drop this link in the Yeah, we can bio. put this in the description. Yeah. yeah. We can put it on YouTube, and we can put it in the podcast description as well. And, uh, yeah, man, this is very, uh, it's very, uh, interesting. It's very heartwarming to see like you guys, you know, important. Yeah. Working for the community really. Yeah, Because they were faced with the decision. Do we relocate our family? Do we leave El Paso? Right. And then nope, they just came together collectively and said, Nope, we're going to just bring this stuff to El Paso. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, That's great. Oh yeah. Mark, once again, we commend you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, means to give them one more round of applause. (laughs) We couldn't get enough. And you get a real round of applause from Chewy right there, too. Wow, look at that. All right, guys. So we're at uh, 38 minutes here. Uh, we're going to get ready to wrap up this podcast. But before we do that, uh, does anybody have the time? Does anybody know what time it is? Chewy, do you know what the time? time it is? Blue, do you got the time? Nobody's got the fucking Nobody's time. Nobody's got a time. What time oh, is boy. it? <laughs> well, I got the time. You know what time it is? <laughs> it's time! Time for the five random questions here at Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast hosted by your boy, Chris Marcus. 
Mark's like the only person that didn't give you the actual time. He didn't even look, bro. <laughs> no, like game show. zero. No, normally everyone's like, oh, it's 146. <laughs> he's like, I watched the show. I get it. I got you. <laughs> he's like, Y'all trying to fuck with me. That's what he's saying. <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Mark. We got five random questions for you. Uh, are you ready for this? Let's then? do it. Are you ready? Let's do it. Chewy, are you ready? Misa, ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me get some uh, music here, Misa. So if you had to be on one of these two game shows, would you rather be on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or Family Feud? Oh, Family Feud. Family, uh, yeah, you can say dirty stuff all the yeah, time. Yeah, you get away you with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'd be good at Family Feud? Oh, yeah. I love. I like the speed round. If you don't put me in the speed round, we ain't winning that. Oh, oh, wow. He said let me get the speed, speed round. round. Yeah. Wow. I love that show. It's just because like, I, I like that show, but like, some of the answers, it's because they pull like a yeah. certain group of people. Yeah, think like crazy people. Right. So you got to think sometimes like how like how dumb or like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Dude, almost, it's just yeah. fun. The how average, average, human, there. The average human, the human being. Yeah. Yeah. The comedy from That's Steve. my favorite. Like, all right, think like somebody that would answer stupid answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like that. How would Misa answer? Yeah, and why do I connect to it? Like, why do I know all those damn answers? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, what's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, that's funny, dude. Yeah, I love the Family Feud, but I like uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire just because, like, the lifelines. I would only get past, like, three <laughs> like, rounds. Like the of, first like, three I would, rounds. I would rather do that, uh, that Deal or No Deal. Oh, yeah, Deal or No Deal. I haven't good. seen that, I like that one before. Yeah, the Deal or No Deal, I think, would be more okay. stressful. That wasn't an option, though. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was A or B, dude. You pick C. God damn it, Lisa. This or that. Yeah. Okay. God damn. All right. Man, question. Up with Harvey, dude. That guy's funny. Dude, yeah, he is bro. funny, dude. He's crazy. Yeah, dude. And then, like, when he sees somebody answer, like, something crazy. I know. You're like, like, it makes me. Yeah, yeah he's like, whoa. Damn, you <laughs> said that <laughs> yeah. on national air. Your wife yeah. is here. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me get some more music. Question number two. Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark, you look you look built. You look hey, like hey, you're, hey, in, you're in good shape. Thank you, Ethan. Um, do you think uh, in a NFL game you can make at least one tackle? Oh hell no! No, <laughs> not at all, you uh, Bro, at the goal line, the NFL one at the tackle, goal line, one dude, tackle. Uh, running back's thighs are my, size of my body. <laughs> I mean, it's like what's the worst that could happen? Break your neck and die? Yeah, <laughs> like your receivers now are like six five, looking like you know. <laughs> 380. That's a, I don't know, man. That's, I feel like you could take down. Uh, I don't know. I what if, if you what if it was okay? What if, ago, I what, if was, yes. what if it was like a fake punt and it's like the kicker running? Oh yeah, I could take kicker. In that case, yeah, 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 I could take easy, him. easy light work. I'll just go for the ankles. <laughs> Aim for the knees. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have you being like a Tom Brady in the NFL. I don't know why. I last forever. Yeah, just like, but like very like on like, the bench. Uh, well, no, no. <laughs> the whole time. Like, no, winning, winning I've been fucking a good Super, kicker. Super Bowl rings. What position would you have played in the NFL? Uh, I would have liked to play something like tight end. Okay, I was gonna say I have you as a like a defensive end. I, I, yeah, you know I was, I mean? that would have been fun too. Yeah, second quarterback. Yeah, dude. You know, a little messing Mark, up the Micah Parsons out yeah. there. But tight end's fun because you got a little bit. You get to like shred people and block right. them, but then you can receive and get some glory. Right, that's yeah. Chris would be like the long snapper because he should oh, do the dude, long snap and then he should stays yeah. there. That is the book. That, you can be any size. There's yeah. a blind guy at USC that was a long yeah. snapper. So that's actually oh, the, shit. Yeah. I didn't yeah, know that. Perfect. If you that's have that crazy. skill, they don't care what how big you are. Right. Like yeah. You need to do that because right. there's so few right. long snappers. That can that's snap crazy. accurately. Yep. Okay, that's, that's crazy. It. Yeah, you look like Rob Gronkowski now that right. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I'm gonna make sure Rob listens to this. <laughs> okay. Oh, he listens for Question sure. yeah. number three. Let's get some more music here. Mr. Mark, do you have an all time favorite band or musician? Oh, so hard. I love music in general. I think all time favorite band? Uh, Shakira. Ooh, yeah, I like her. Shakira. Oh, he's just going to <laughs> jail by the way. Baby. Say, <laughs> Dave Matthews. Oh, I have to go with some Dave just because it always puts me in a good vibe. Long yep. time, but I mean, I don't listen to him as much anymore as I should, just because I like to explore and hear everything. Did you? Didn't see- he get into movies? Right, he's got some good comedy. At yeah, he's like in um a couple of Adam Sandler films. He's, he's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Did you see uh, Dave Matthews Band when they came uh, to the Sun Bowl yeah, with the, the real Stones? Rolling Stones? Yeah, actually, it was kind of lame though because they were trying to outside outshine the Stones, so he was pretty submissive. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, uh, he's like, ah, I'll just do my thing. <laughs> okay. It won't be great. Actually, we're gonna, my wife and I are gonna go see him in Denver for our anniversary in September. Okay, nice. nice. So we still go check him out. How many years you been married now? 17, 16, Shh, 17. There you nice. go, man. Yeah, a while. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay, question number four. Let's get some more music here. Mr. Mark, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh. Okay, so historically, it's Nueste Mantequilla. 
So what? yeah, no es de mantequilla. Butter pecan. Mm. Oh, okay, I was like, yeah, what is yeah, that? Yeah. It's my okay. favorite butter but pecan. But it's not often available, so then I'll go with either like pistachio or mocha. Okay, those are. How do you feel about Neapolitan right. ice cream? No, no, fuck that. <laughs> no, that was he literally very said aggressive. Fuck yeah, that. no, that's that. Is, that is gross. <laughs> Are you, chocolate? No. are you strawberry or are you vanilla? Make up your mind. You can't be all three. <laughs> yeah, you can't be all three. It's, it's 2022. You could be whatever you want. You can, but not an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number five. Wow. Last one here. Yeah, you just pissed him off, Chris. <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> that was a good question. That's funny. I, was Actually, gonna, I'll eat all the I thought he was going to say trickle like, taco. Okay. <laughs> all right, Mr. Mark. In your... Uh, in your um, for you, for you, if you can only go to one place to eat in El Paso, where are you going? Best restaurant out there. Oh, that's also, well, my family owns a restaurant, so I have to be very strategic. Right. They own, my wife's family owns Carl's and Mickey's. Ooh. Yeah, so that place that's is a good one. Guess where go we're often. going. It's good, delicious. Kind of an event, right, to go there. It's kind of right. like a, a thing to do. I don't know, man. I don't know if I have. I love food. I'm a foodie. You're so foodie. I eat anywhere. Anywhere is good. I don't care. Um Besides Carlos and Besides Mickey's, Carlos and Mickey's, one other. We just need know. one. Shoot. It's like McDonald's on Paisano. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like chains. That's the one thing. I'm not a very right, right, big right. chain person. Like I'd rather be local and authentic. L and J's. L and J's good. I was just there with Dave. We had Dave and I had lunch the other day. It was good. Um, I like Leo's. Leo's, Leo's is, is like fire, yeah, it's Leo's good, so man. So good. I love that. That's place. my dad's favorite restaurant. So every time he goes in town, we got to go to Leo's. Man, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I have like a go to. I just like them all. <laughs> I like, I like them all. I'll take them up. all. <laughs> if you're local and delicious, I'll go. Am I the only person who doesn't care for Leo's? What is I, I don't really you? care. I don't like really care. My for wife's Leo's not a big either. fan either. She's I'm like, this is not real fan. Mexican food. It's like, no. What? It's I'd rather not. go to Avila. Oh, no. I it's can't. Like Avila smells like grease. Okay, anyways. Dude, Los Jarones is better. I like Los Jarones. is good. That is good. Um, are you a fucking, um, when you when you uh, get tacos, do you like the fried tortillas or the soft tortillas? I can go either way. Either way? Yeah. Okay. Depends. Like, sometimes like, the fried kind of is good yeah, and sometimes yeah. the soft is good. It just kind of depends. Okay. I can't yeah. imagine like a like a steak taco with a hard shell. Right, that's right, weird. Right, but right. It's, yeah. Or like a steak taco, you got to have a soft shell. You got to have a soft yeah, shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's but, uh, that's flour that tortilla the whole way, bro. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, you see, he knows Homemade what flour about. tortilla? Mm. Uh, Hit me. That's that's not on a taco. Okay. All right. Those are our five random questions with our guy Mark here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get, get ready to wrap up the podcast. We'll go around the studio here and give our final thoughts today. Let's start with you, Amanda. You know, um, thanks, Mark, for taking your time and <laughs> yeah. being with us here. What today. happened there? <laughs> I had a reverb. <laughs> she had a stroke. <laughs> She's, still She's like, Leo sucks. Yeah. Fuck Leo's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God damn. Well, I was going to take you there after this, but forget it. <laughs> Can Taco see it is? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, but thank you for taking the time to sit fun. down with us and, you know, just share the different um, things that you guys have going on, the work that you and Christina are doing for the Down Syndrome Coalition. Like, that's just awesome. So to have people out there, educators, nurses, things of that nature in, in our community, like, it makes me feel good to be back home. Gee, there nice. you go. There you go. All right, nice. Mr. Final thoughts on yes, today's pod. Mr. Paz, man, thank you so much for giving us your time. Oh, yes, sir. Um, I really appreciate the job and the work that you do. It takes somebody very special to um, to do that job and to do it right and to actually love it. Um, I couldn't I couldn't do it for a minute, dude. I'd, I'd quit <laughs> for sure. But thank you so much. Um, good luck on this new school year. Thank you. Um, I wish you the best. Uh, thank you, Chewy, for showing up today on time. Yeah. Appreciate you, guy. Fresh kit, by the way. Yeah. Sweet. Fresh kit. Um, everybody listening, guys, thank you so much. Uh, you guys make sure to stay safe and stay fresh. Mr. Mark, final thoughts on today's podcast, man. I appreciate the visit, uh, the opportunity. It was fun to visit with y'all and, and reminisce, really. This is yeah, like, dude, we haven't seen sure. and hung out in a while. Like the last time was it? Oh, can raise a couple of months. Yeah, I was like, gonna say a ago. gasoline raise right before corner COVID bar. Yeah, 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 we're right hanging right out. Uh, <laughs> my last beer turned into like seven shots, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I was leaving uh, guys, for like three I hours. Go, there, I gotta go. Yeah. Really, this time we gotta go. Uh, Christina was like, "We're staying." I was like, "Okay." Yeah. yeah dude, uh, so that was good times, and any time to talk about, you know, what my wife and I do. It's we're passionate about it, so it's easy. That's what's up, man. And uh, yeah, final thoughts for me, guys, Mr. Mark. Thank you once again for being here. Give him a round of applause, Misa. I knew this was going to be a good one. I mean, yeah. we, you know, we've 
friends off the pod. So, you know, this was just like a matter of formality, getting you in here and, and, and talking to you and letting you tell your story and kind of uh, letting you showcase like what you've been able to do for yourself and your family and everything for the community. Like all that shit is really, really appreciated. Uh, so we have an open door policy. Anytime you want to come back round two, uh, we can make that happen. In the basement. Uh, yeah, dude, yeah, 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 in the yeah, fucking basement. basement of El Paso High. That would be epic. Uh, Amanda, thank you for stepping in in the producer chair. Misa, good one. Chewy, you're fucking beautiful, bro. Look at him, dude. That yeah. Juventus kid, shh, God damn. He looks like change. Cristiano Ronaldo right there. <laughs> uh, for all our live audience, Blue, our cousin Adam, thank you guys oh, for boy, being Blue. here. Uh, thank you all for subbing on YouTube, liking us on Instagram, following us on, on Facebook. With all that being said, episode 135, we are... Do, 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 do. Leo's. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I get you tapered like a new fresh haircut. Put it in ignition, now a nigga got his keys stuck. Zanny got amnesia, holds down G's up. Bitch, Ooh, hit me back with the Addy or where you stay, baby. Yeah, I've been thinking about you like every day. We can sit back, watch the skyline, look, I saw a shooting star. I can put you on, baby.